Hi everyone, I am Sanya Kule. This is cute Yangshi and little May there. And in this video, I want to talk to you about um, and yet another um, tool available on G Profiler, which is Gene ID conversion. So what we're going to talk about here is essentially how we can um, run this analysis in G Profiler um, to essentially do Gene ID conversion. So gene ID conversion will help us convert between different gene, um, protein, microbe, and um, numeric um, other types of namespaces. So there are different types of IDs and you can sort of map them to different um, genes and figure out more information about them this way. So um, it's available again on G-Profiler and I want to walk you through a, a few examples as well. So what you're going to see over here is this is the um, site. It's a G profiler here and um, it's under the G convert. So it's gene ID conversion. And I've made videos for the other one, like functional profiling, orthology search, SNP ID to gene name. So please do check those out here. But we have a query and we have a, um, an organism and we can have some organisms of interest as well. Parasites, plants, metazoa, fungi, um, you know, cow, sea elegans, you know, with that um, worm, zebra fish, drosophila, the fruit fly, so many different um, organisms here. So um, I want to kind of talk about an example here of how we can do this. So let's just say that we have um, some example file of, um, of gene IDs here. We know in this example, like sort of like what those are and which genes they map to, but I just sort of want to show you how this will work. So for, um, we have this, a set of entree IDs and we may have some gene names, but those may or may not be the most up to date. So I want to um, copy this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste and we can only put the, um, this number. So this column here, let's try putting this column in here. Um, and seeing what we get here. Well, we're going to get an error because we first need to say, what do we want to treat numeric IDs as? The default is ensemble ID, ensemble. And why do I know that? Well, I had um, a set of ensemble ID data um, and I'm just going to show that to you next. But, um, but since the default is ensemble ID, if you don't mention anything, it's going to think that these are ensemble IDs and not work for those. Um, you might also be wondering, well, what are those exactly? Well, for instance, if we look up some gene, um, APO and in gene cards, you're going to see that this APO gene has an HGNC ID, an NCBI entree gene ID, which is what we're using here. It also has an ensemble ID as well. OMEM, Unipro, Swiss protein, it has a lot of these things here. So we want to just be able to um, put in So in this list of genes here that we had, we should now instead treat it as an entree gene because that's what it was. So also we're saying, so when we're putting in this part here, what we're saying is, the cute little Yankee has just come here now. Hi little guy. Uh, he wants to learn more about this gene mapping. See, he wants to learn. Okay. So when we had this, when before when we put in um, nothing here, 
then we're going to get an error. So here, what this part is saying is not going to map to anything. So we must say numeric ID should be treated as onto a gene. So what this is saying over here, essentially, is this is this part is corresponding to what we want. And when we're uh, selecting the target gene namespace, what do we what are we mainly looking at? We are looking at we wanting the ensemble gene ID, for instance. So what this is is this is also corresponding to this part and to this part um, and this part. That's the initial alias. And the converted alias is sort of like what we're interested in which is what the target gene namespace is, which is what the converted alias is. And then along the way, what we're going to see is so that we have the ensemble gene ID. So we have this list of entree gene IDs, um, and then we are converting them to ensemble gene IDs, and then as well mapping those to the corresponding gene names here. That's what we're doing here. We're mapping them to the ensemble gene IDs. And again, genes have like ensemble gene IDs, like, you know, APO. So genes have different mapping IDs here, like an ensemble ID. So that's all we're doing over here. So we can also see what happens if we are putting that into HGNC, for instance. If we put it in HGNC, then it's just going to return like the HGNC like name as well. So you see how this changes here, as I was showing you guys. This over here, which is the target namespace, the HGNC just refers to gene name. So that's sort of what we observe over here when we're looking essentially at the HGNC. HGNC is just gene name. So then the target namespace is just a converted alias as well. So if it's HGNC, we'll get the gene name, which again, you see that these are the same. We could also look at um, entre genes, trans name, gene DB. Okay, um, you can try out all of these. Keg enzyme, keg enzyme as well. This will map to keg enzyme. Like, let's see what happens if we do um, gene database, not, not applicable. So we can try playing around with all of these different things here. Because essentially, that's what um, G profiler says for gene ID conversion. We provide at least 40 types of IDs for more than 60 species. The 98 different namespaces supported for humans include ensemble, RefSeq, Illumina, Entree, Gene, and Unit for identifiers. All namespaces are obtained through matching them via ensemble gene identifiers as a reference. So why this is also important? Yeah, my little Yankee is cleaning himself. I just sort of want to show you guys um, another couple of examples um, related to like, what if I just know um, ensemble IDs, for instance, like let's say I have a list of ensemble IDs. How would I um, find out what those are um, associated with? So let me just show you the list of ensemble IDs and I want to map those to genes. So I have this list right here, and these are for humans right here. But these are a list of ensemble IDs here, but 23,783. So I'm going to copy them over, and then I'm going to um, go to the gconvert tab here. So numeric IDs now, instead I'm going to be, I'm just going to leave this part blank.
Oh, I'm just, I can click the refresh button so that nothing is selected. So if I click refresh, nothing is selected here, and then I can paste this here. So it's going to run this query. So what I did is I in is I is I did refresh because I didn't want any of these here. It's none of these right here. This is the ensemble ID. So this is a list of ensemble IDs. And remember, by default, um, what um, G profilers tool is doing is it's going through the list of ensemble IDs. So this is ensemble IDs. And you can see right here that this is the uh, initial alias is the same as the converted alias. These are the same here. But the benefit is that now I have more background on what these ensemble IDs, like what are the gene names that they map to. So for instance, if I look up T-SPAN6 gene here in gene cards, I, I hope I can find ensemble genes ending in three. Uh, ensemble gene ending in three, that's exactly it. That's awesome. So that just shows me that like, you know, I could have looked these up manually, but that would have taken a long time. I could have like looked those up manually. But so that shows that from this list of ensemble IDs, we're mapping them to genes as well as to gene descriptions from a list of ensemble IDs. So that's pretty cool. So ensemble ID to list of gene um, names um, for, the, for humans here. And then this is a very express ensemble, um, Human protein atlas as well, like you know, all these things here. But we have another example is uh, let's see, like DPM1, uh, dilocal phosphate manosyl transferase subunit one, catalytic. And the HGNC symbol is the gene name. So we can see here that the ensemble ID for this gene is ENSG0000, all the way ending in a 419. Oh, wait. which is exactly what this is that we looked up. DPM one's ensemble gene was um, ending in four one nine, and that's exactly what we see here. So that just shows that that is so cool that we could map a list of ensemble IDs here to the protein names. And I also want to show you something, um, which is something that I was working on as well. So I have a list of proteins. Um, and these were in mice. So a project I was working on, um, I was looking at mice, mus musculus. In particular, I was looking at these proteins in mice. And when we're talking about proteins, a really great source is BioGrid. It's a database of protein genetic and chemical interactions. <laughs> you know, from its comprehensive curation, you know, on protein and genetic interactions and chemical interactions and post-translational modifications. So this is like, um, once you have that, um, like a ribosome um, has translated into a polypeptide chain, then there's some modifications made before making it into a protein. Hi, me. It's okay, me, you can go up there. Oh, May's a little bit shy. So, um, you know, we can search by uh, protein or gene identifiers, for instance. So um, I had this list of um, ma or mouse protein names, mouse musculus. There are around um, 9,607 of those. So let's just see if I look at one of them, for instance. Um, this is in the mice. And using BioGrid. Um, I think I should go back here and actually put it in um, mus musculus. This is, uh, it sounds muscular. This is a mouse. So yeah, this is awesome. So now I put in this identifier here in mice. That is what this is, is. This is the protein name. And this is the organism. The organism is a mouse. So 
So that's what it is. And now I can look it up and I can just see, okay, this is sort of what it is doing. Um, this is the, the gene that it's mapped to Margo HB as well, protein Margo Nashi homolog 2. Um, so in general, you can see that BioGrid is a resource for proteins. Now I can tell you that for G profiler, let's just, you know, refresh everything here. I want to now look up and see for this list of proteins, can I map it back to some gene names and I and better understand what this list of proteins is associated with. So I have these, and this is for the organism mouse. So I'm just going to copy this here and I'm going to paste it right here in the query. These are lists of mouse proteins. I wonder who named these. We need a list of proteins in mice, mouse musculus. And then the organism is going to be mouse musculus, which is a mouse. And I want to say that numeric IDs are, and I'm going to select BioGrid because as you were seeing, we were just talking about BioGrid. Remember BioGrid, we are here in BioGrid. You know, it's a protein database. So let's run this query. And indeed what you see is the following. <laughs> That this first one that we were looking at, this A0, A023T778, this one is called Margo HB, which is indeed what we found here for the same one. Um, let me show it better. So what we'd found in the biogrid under the same one right here. So yeah, let me actually go to BioGrid and show you guys. This is what we had just found. For some reason, I had just misplaced that identifier. So let me just put in um, this same identifier. Let me just um, copy the top one and let me put it in here. And then we can search it here in BioGrid. And we find that this one is indeed a Mago HB, which is what this is. So it's Marco homolog B, exon junction complex core component. So you learn a lot. So it's like you look Unipro, you know, the set of databases on proteins as well, which is nice. And um, so another example that we're going to do is the following. We can check this out. We can see if we put this in mouse, mus musculus in biogrid, if it indeed is the same. So this is like RPGR, retinous pigmentosa GTPase regulator, which is exactly what this is saying here. So you can download, you can um, figure out like other things about it, but this is just a very interesting way for you to, um, you know, map what information you have, which here are mouse protein identifiers. You can map those to using BioGrid as well. These are BioGrid identifiers. Um, so basically these are like biogrid. These are biogrid protein identifier IDs for mice. And um, they have these numeric values. Even though there's some numbers here, it's just a way of speak as well. Oh, very cute. So I just want you guys to see that if we were to treat maybe AFI and then run the query.
So yeah, I've shown you just a few different examples of this really cool tool and how you can map identifiers and try to retrieve gene information. There are other resources out there, but I just want to share these for you in case any of these um, is helpful for you guys for your research um, or other work. So we can look at things for different organisms, for different um, gene IDs as well. There's so many um, uh, for gene IDs, or we could look at 14 IDs, we can look at, and even within um, 14 and gene, there are various ways of writing what these are as well. Um, so the proteins can typically be in peptide sequence array data, like for protein peptides. And I um, have worked with that as well, but um, I, and, and also with genes as well extensively. So I think that this is a really cool, um, you know, resource. So there's so much that you can unlock with G Profiler. So please go ahead and try it out. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, I look forward to hearing from you um, with any questions or comments, and I really hope that this um, has helped. So uh, yeah, I just hope that this is helpful for you guys. So please um, like, subscribe, and share, and please let me know any questions that you have, and I'm just really happy to help you guys in any way that I can. Um, I hope that this all works out for you guys. Thank you, guys. And again, this is just about doing gene conver ID conversion, but you can also do the same with protein ID conversion for different organisms, how to figure out gene names and other information from them, rather than searching one by one by one, this is just allowing you to do like bulk um, analysis. Of course, you can do the same thing in programming, um, which I will try to investigate as well, but this is just another really cool resource for you guys to use. And this cute little Yang, she also won. So I hope that you, this helps you guys. So um, yeah, please let me know if you have any questions at all. And you know, Thanks from little me, Yangshi, and Mimi. Thank you guys. Man, I keep badgering them, but that's sort of what's on my uh, shirt right now. The cute little badger. So hence, I'm badgering them.